Joseph D. Grant County Park is located at the base of Mount Hamilton. Its 9,500 acres of land has history dating back to 1839, when the Spanish gave the land to Governor Alvarado. In the 1880s, the Grant family began to acquire different pieces of the land and started to build many, now historic, structures. For instance, at the Grant Trailhead where we are starting our walk, there are two historic structures, ranch and cookhouse. After the death of Joseph Grant and his wife Edith, the ranch was left to their children and bought by their daughter, Josephine Grant McCreary. She resided there until 1972. Josephine willed half of the ranch to save the Redwoods League and half to the Menninger Foundation. Both organizations sold their portion of the ranch in 1975 to the County of Santa Clara. Joseph D. Grant Park was dedicated and open to the public in 1978. This is why the park is named after Joseph D. Grant and some trail names are named after his family and historic structures located near trails. Another interesting fact about Grant was that he was a founding member of the Save the Redwoods League. We begin our walk on the wide, flat hotel trail. Can you hear the chorus of northern flickers, woodpecker drumming, chestnut-backed chickadees, white-breasted nuthatches, and oak titmouses that are bustling in the trees and shrubs? These birds nest in the cavities of the trees and eat insects. Along the trail, there are bushes and small trees of different sizes and shapes, such as coyote bush, cherry plum, coffee berry, holly leaf cherry, and sage. The colors they display are pale yellow and green and dark green. The ones with berries supply food for the local birds. The hills of this park are studded with five types of oak trees, valley oak, blue and black oak, coast live oak and canyon live oak that provide habitat and food for more than 32 species of birds and 39 species of mammals. The most common way to distinguish among different western oaks is to look carefully at their leaves and if it is the fall season then you can observe their acorns. Oak leaves vary by whether they have lobes or not and what is the shape of their lobes. For instance, canyon and interior live oaks and tan oak leaves do not have lobes. We bear left onto a narrower trail called the Loop Trail that takes us to the first lake called Bass Lake. We spot some acorn woodpeckers flying onto and out of a valley oak tree and pecking on a thick branch. These woodpeckers have a bright red cap, but so do pileated, red-headed, red-bellied, and hairy woodpeckers, so you need to look further to identify them. They are black above, with a black mask across their eyes and side of their face and around their beak, but bright white on their forehead and cheeks. Their belly is white with black stripes. Looking closely at the tree, we can see rows of holes in the branches indicating where the woodpeckers found its food. Woodpecker tongues are commonly covered with barbs or sticky saliva that are long enough to find ants and insect larvae deep in the wood crevices. Their tongue is so long it is stored by being curled around the back of its head between its skull and skin. We see large clumps of vegetation in the oak trees hanging from the bare branches. The trees are infested with oak mistletoe, a parasitic plant that is transferred from tree to tree by birds that feed on its berries. Mistletoe sends out thread-like strands into branches, tapping the tree's nutrients and water to survive. Too many mistletoe growths starve the tree of nutrients and water 
and it becomes unhealthy and will eventually die. We pass a large California buckeye or horse chestnut tree that has many ornaments hanging from its branches. These are their nuts, which are unpleasant tasting and contain the toxin used for rat poison. Native insects such as the orange tortrix, polyphemus, and speckled green fruitworm moth are attracted to buckeye flowers because they eat the nectar. We turn right onto the Bass Lake Trail and just 50 steps further we see Bass Lake. This is exciting! There are all kinds of birds drinking and eating at Bass Lake. Across the lake from where we are we see three bright colored male birds sitting next to each other on a dead tree branch overhanging the water. They are tilting their bodies down to drink water and then back up again every second or so. These western bluebirds are stocky birds with a shiny blue head, throat, wings, and tail, a bright rust orange breast and upper back, and a great white belly. Bluebirds are social and usually hunt for insects and feed on berries in groups. A female flies in to join them on the branch. Not far away, on another branch overhanging the water, we see an acorn woodpecker drinking water from the lake. Their bright red cap and black mask that contrasts their white throat and forehead is clearly visible. More acorn woodpeckers fly in from a nearby tree to join him. After they are done drinking, they fly back to the tree, peck the wood, and eat the insects, and then fly back down for a drink. This behavior is repeated over and over. Looking into the sky, we spot a red-tailed hawk soaring in the clear blue sky. They are one of the largest birds in North America. They have broad, rounded wings with a span of up to 52 inches and a short, wide tail. Their feather coloration varies, but generally they are rich brown above and pale below with streaks of brown on their belly. Their eye color changes from pale yellow to brown as they age. With their sharp vision, they can see their prey, such as squirrels, mice, and rabbits, from 100 feet in the air and dive at up to 125 miles per hour to catch it. Hawks live an average of 20 years and do not begin breeding until they are three years old. Their nests are found up to 75 feet high in forks of large trees. This is where they lay two to four eggs, which hatch within 30 days. We continue on the loop trail to go to McCreary Lake that is double the size of Bass Lake. This lake was named after the daughter of Joseph D. Grant, who married into the McCreary family. Across the lake, a greater yellow legs is waiting in the water and bobbing its head up and down into the mud to hunt for aquatic insects, small fish, and marine worms. It is a large, lanky shorebird with a long bill. 
Its back and wings are a checkerboard of white and brown with a light colored breast and long bright yellow legs. It migrates here from Canada and Mexico. We also see a sooty black Phoebe perched on a branch who is looking for its afternoon insect snack. On the left side of the lake, we see disrupted foliage and soil, which is evidence of wild boar foraging. Boars have a well-developed sense of smell. They use their long, strong snouts to dig up the ground, or what is called root the soil, as they search for food such as nuts, acorns, roots, bulbs, insects, and worms. Female wild boars are social and live in groups of other females and their offspring. These groups are called sounders. They communicate using growls for aggression and squeals for approachability. We travel south on two more trails with shrubs on either side of the trail, then crossing a bridge and along a creek that has bright green algae growing at the bottom and floating on the top. Along the way, we see native plants and wildflowers and views of the surrounding area. The first wildflower that greets us is a cluster of deep blue petaled flowers with white appendages at its center and long stalked leaves at the base of the plant. This flower is called Pacific Hound's Tongue. It got its common name from the shape of its leaves. Native Americans use preparations from the root of this plant to treat burns and stomach aches. Next we see milkmaids that have four white petals with pale pink veins and bright yellow anthers projecting from its center. It is one of the first flowers to bloom in the Bay Area. Milkmaids are a host plant for Sarah's orange tip butterflies named for their bright orange wingtips. We pass by a tree with a four foot diameter trunk and a one foot diameter gall growing on the side of its trunk. Galls are abnormal swellings or tumors caused by rapidly dividing plant cells. The growth can be a reaction to insects, bacteria, fungi, mechanical injury, or genetic mutation. They can occur on any part of a plant, leaves, branches, roots, trunks, and even flower petals. This yellow native flower is the California buttercup. It has more than a dozen overlapping glossy yellow petals. The flower is edible, and they are the host plant for three different species of moth. On the side of the trail, we find a cow vertebra from the lower spine that is 10 inches wide and 6 inches tall. Our parks allow cattle to graze in the grasslands as a means to prevent wild fires. Their most common predators are a band of coyotes and mountain lions. This shooting star has four narrow lavender petals that are at the top of a very thin, long, and brown stem. Along the Yerba Buena Trail, we have views of Mount Hamilton that has a peak of more than 4,200 feet and Lake Astronomical Observatory that is owned and operated by the University of California. The observatory was built in 1887 and now houses a 120-inch reflector telescope. From the top of the Lakeview Trail, not only can we view Grant Lake, but also Cook House. In 1932, Joseph D. Grant made extensive renovations to the cookhouse that included adding two new wings to the structure, 
building a swimming pool and pool house, adding a second floor balcony, and more. The cookhouse later became the park office and is currently undergoing restoration. Along the Lakeview Trail, we find more wildflowers. Orange flowered fiddlenecks are commonly used for erosion control and habitat restoration. Its prickly fruit gets attached to animal fur or human socks, helping to spread its seeds. Fiddleneck flowers are tubular with five petals. Their flower buds are in tight coils at the top of the plant. The flowers open from the bottom to the top, causing the stem to uncoil. Thus, they got their common name, because the stem is curved like the neck of a fiddle, and the flowers coming off the stem seem like toony pegs. On the right side of the trail is a five-foot-tall shrub called hillside gooseberry. Hanging upside down from its thin, dark brown branches are cranberry red berries with bristles. Their berries are edible and provide food for birds and caterpillars. Its flowers also hang upside down. This bush has deep green shiny leaves that are rounded and lobed. We arrive at our final destination, Grant Lake, that is home to waterfowl and other birds, reptiles, and more. Along the side of the lake among water plants are a bale of turtles with their necks up in the air surveying the water. These slider turtle shells and skin are olive to brown in color with yellow stripes. Unfortunately, they were pet turtles introduced into the wild by owners who no longer wanted them and are considered an aggressive invasive species taking over the habitat for California's only freshwater turtle, the western pond turtle, that is a species of special concern. In the tall weeds by the lake is a light gray bird sitting on one of the fragile branches looking for insects to eat. It has a white eye ring, white tipped wings, and is lighter gray on its belly. It blends in perfectly with the reeds and is easy to miss. Tree swallows are flying above Grant Lake. Adult males are colorful blue-green above and white below with gray-black wings and a thin black eye mask. They breed in open habitats such as fields and wetlands, usually near water. They feed on small aerial insects that they catch in their mouths during acrobatic flight. 